Hello and welcome to our Good Friday service, uh, the time when we remember Jesus' betrayal and crucifixion. We'll be uh, taking communion later on, so if you do uh, are able to get something uh, to drink and something to eat, we'll be uh, sharing that near the end of this little time. We're going to start with prayer and then we'll have a song. Uh, and after that, we're going to use John's Gospel to help us as we move through the story of Jesus' crucifixion. As we begin, let us pray. Loving God, today in reverence and awe, we tread the holy ground of Calvary, this place of abandonment that has become the scene of our adoration, this place of suffering that has become the source of our peace. This place of violence that has become the battlefield on which love is victorious. Merciful God, as we relive the events of this day, it's with awe that we count again the cost of our salvation. Words cannot be found to utter our thanksgiving. Accept our adoration. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to have our first song now, which is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Thank you. 
Amen. We're going to continue with our service now. We're going to use John's Gospel, starting in chapter 18, uh, to guide us through the story of Jesus' crucifixion. We will read a few verses and we will be moved into prayer by what we have read. If you'd like to read along with us, we are starting in chapter 18 at verse 20. So we begin as Jesus has been arrested and is being questioned by the priests. Jesus said, I've spoken openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret, so why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. Lord, we thank you for your teaching that even today affects how we live and what we do. Lord, help us to remember those lessons you, you taught us. Lord, to challenge us, to push us further, to grow us in deeper relationship with you. Lord, help us today as we think of your death. Remember also the life you lived, all that you came to say. Speak to us today, we pray. Amen. Amen. We now join Peter, who has snuck into uh, the courts, uh, verse, starting on verse 25 of chapter 18. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a cock began to crow. Lord Jesus, uh, we in this reading can see something of ourselves where we have denied you in the past, maybe before one another, in our words, or perhaps even by our actions. Lord, we are sorry for the times that we have let you down, when we have denied your Holy Spirit and your work in our lives, when we have not lived a life worthy of your holiness, a life worthy of bearing our crosses daily. Lord, we ask you that you would have mercy upon us, that you would restore us whenever we let you down. In your mercy we pray. Amen. Amen. Now we come to the point in the story that we particularly uh, remember on this day. Difficult words as we hear Jesus, uh, the abuse Jesus was given and his sentence of crucifixion. We're going to begin at the beginning of chapter 19 and uh, also jump to set at verse 17 at the crucifixion point. Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again saying, Hail King of the Jews, and slapped him in the face. The soldiers took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. And there they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Lord, we can't imagine what you went through. We hear those descriptions of the uh, physical abuse that was given to you, an innocent man. But Lord, we know it goes beyond just the physical as well, and you did so much more for us on that cross. Lord, we recognise that you took punishment that we should have received for things we've done wrong. But Lord, you took that because you love us so much. Your love brought you to here, to earth, took you to that cross, that place of atonement for us. Father, we thank you for that. But Lord, help us this day remember the lengths you've gone to, to bring us back to you. And may we honour that and respond to that today. Amen. Amen. 
We continue in chapter 19, verse 19. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man claims to be the King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Lord Jesus, though he did not know it, Pilate declared a universal truth, that you are the King of the Jews. We know also, Lord, that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, that you are highly exalted, above all authority and power and dominion is yours. Yet, Lord, on the cross, that was a sign of being mocked, of being ridiculed, of people not recognising you for who you are. Lord, we worship you, the King, the King of the Jews, the King of all people. And Lord, have mercy when we don't recognise you fully. Amen. Amen. Crucifixion was a brutal punishment and it wasn't an immediate death sentence. It took a while on that cross. We come now to verse 28, the death of Jesus. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And a jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop pant, and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. When he'd received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Lord, when he declared it was finished, again, there was so much more behind that than what people could see in front of their eyes. As we heard there, Lord, you came to fulfil what God, your Father, had said throughout the ages, that you wanted to redeem people back to you, that we would be brought back into your family. And through your death on the cross, Lord, you provided the way. Lord, when you said it was finished, it was also the start of a new beginning for each one of us. Thank you for that, Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus' body still hung on the cross for some time and it was tested to make sure that he was still dead. But a faithful man, Joseph of Arimathea, decided to take the body and to place it in his own tomb. We read from John 19, verse 40. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them, Joseph and Nicodemus, wrapped the body with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Lord Jesus, your body broken, your body pierced, your life gone, the spirit given up, your body wrapped in cloths and laid in a tomb. Lord, at this time we remember that you are the crucified and saviour the one who died for us whose body was bound and laid to rest lord until easter sunday comes let us not forget that your body was broken and that you died help us to remember that and to not leap forward Lord, we thank you for your body broken, laid to rest. Amen. Amen.
We're now going to have another song and reflecting on this story, When I Survey. coming to uh, the place of sharing communion with one another. If you don't have uh, something to represent bread and something to represent wine with you, then perhaps you should pause the video now and uh, go and get those items. We will begin with a prayer of lament. Let's pray. Lord, we want to come back. You have torn, but we know you will heal. You've struck down, but we know you will bind us up. Bring us out of the prison so we should praise you again. 
we feel as though you have deserted us, but we know we have deserted you. Do not leave us here, O Lord. Do not let this be the end. Loving God, even now, even here, your love is real. Your mercy is sure, so have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison. The night before Jesus was crucified, he met with his disciples and they were sharing a meal with one another. And during that meal, Jesus picked up the loaf of bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. He distributed it to his disciples saying, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in memory of me. As we eat the bread, we remember that we are one people, one church, separated by distance and restrictions, but we are one people. Let's eat. Father, may that be a reminder of your body to us. Mm. On the same night, he took a cup and gave thanks and said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. And so now we do that. We drink this in remembrance of what he has done for us. Let's drink. Lord, as we drink, we remember that that is your blood poured out. The blood spilt as a sign of the new covenant, the new covenant of grace and of mercy and of love for all people. We thank you, Lord, that you have overcome. We thank you that yours is the victory. But help us not to forget that you endured that great pain, that your body was broken, that your blood was spilt. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, Easter weekend is a funny one because the Friday is uh, a day of reflection on what Jesus has done. But we do remember Sunday is around the corner and we hope you can join us this Sunday. We are having a service uh, here in our car park at 10 a.m., um, which you are free to come along to. But for today, we know that Sunday is coming, but we remember what Jesus did for us on that day. Good Friday, many years ago. We're going to finish just now with the power of the cross and we won't return back to the camera. Use this as a reflection, time to reflect upon what Jesus has done for you. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whose body was broken, whose body was bound, whose body was laid in the tomb, may that Lord Jesus be with you today. May he speak into your heart. May he speak truth to you, the truth that he is our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. See you on Sunday. So